Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube's live performance here in Denver for Boomi World. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. We're kind of getting down to wrapping up day three of our live coverage. A lot of great guests. The needle's moving big time in the cloud, next generation, modern infrastructure, Genevieve AI, Boomi's driving a big transformation across the cloud, and of course, their customer base. We've got two great guests here, Dan McAllister, Chief Vice President of Alliance, the channels at Boomi, and Nicole Bradley, Principal at AWS Amazon Web Services. Good to see you back. Yeah, Welcome thank you. Thank you, nice to meet you. Excited. So, Boomi and Amazon have a great relationship, so sure. put that out there. We kind of covered that earlier in the show. Um, the agility that you guys get for being in the cloud and also with the software has caused a lot of great partnerships. Yeah. So, Dan, take a minute to explain the relationship with AWS and some of the value you guys are offering through the solution with AWS. Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, just to congratulate AWS again for being our cloud service provider of the year. Yeah. We completely uh, go to market with AWS and they are our preferred provider in, in all respects in that. And they give us tremendous agility not only in the breadth and reach of how we you know, uh, get to our customers, but the strategic relationship we have in the conversations of how we're going to deliver value to those customers is amazing. We have great account executive relationships, we have great executive relationships, and we're finding new and new markets and different ways to go together, which I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about in a few minutes. So, yeah. full complete partnership and, uh, and world class leading, so it's amazing. Yeah, good, yeah. good synergies, yes, and you're bringing a lot of value. It's, it's, it's a great better together store. Amazon has great value, you're a good customer, and you provide good value to your customers through you and all that good stuff. Yeah. And, and some of these are, are solutions that kind of pop out. The one we're talking about here is SAP. Yeah. So talk about that specific thing, because this is an interesting use case, and I think it's one that illustrates some of the value that, that happens in the innovation in the cloud, and it's, it's not always that obvious. When you look at it, well, that's obvious. Yeah. To explain yeah. What, what's going on. Yeah, sure. So first of all, uh, yeah, we'll get to SAP in a second, but most of our clients at the enterprise level who are also SAP clients have about a thousand other applications out there that they're trying to make sense of. Right, so application sprawl has happened across all organizations and they're trying to make sense of that. Most of those applications, about 30% are integrated, so they have a massive opportunity to bring that data together to deliver it into SAP and other interfaces to ultimately get the value they want. What's unique about the SAP partnership is SAP has added extreme amount of value in their data sphere platform, yeah. right? So to get customers from where they are now to that is actually going to be a forced migration over the next few years. Yeah. And so this is a massive opportunity, not only upgrade that platform, upgrade the way the data flows through that, you know, that application, but also capture the rest of the market, right? The rest of their enterprise data and bring that together. And that's the unique value of Boomi, because if it was just SAP, you could stay within the SAP yeah. environment and be fine. But if you want to capture the other thousand applications, the data inside and outside of your organization and deliver that, that's what we're talking about is Boomi, you know, yeah. providing the most value. And I'll, I'll let Nicole comment on the unique value that AWS provides in that equation, but it's enormous, so I'm yeah, very excited. Nicole, what's yeah. the collaboration? Oh, it's excellent. We have an SAP practice, very large, one of our largest at AWS. And what's really exciting about that is our customers running on Boomi, which are also some of our largest, have a lot of other data, as he mentioned, other applications, so they can bring their own private data stores with the bring your own data. And they're able to do this in a seamless way without having to go out and get additional licenses or technologies or products to help with that migration. They're already using two trusted partners of theirs. They're using it collaboratively, and really we talk about you know, the better together story, but this is the best together, because it's us, Boomi, and our mutual partner. So it's really the Nirvana. How is the money being saved? What's, the, what's some of the, if you, can you share some of the, yeah. some of the cost savings involved for SAP customers in this scenario? Absolutely, so as I mentioned, they don't have to go out and find another product, but Boomi, in partnership with AWS, but primarily Boomi is really doing all the hard work up front. We just actually came out with a big press release about it, and we've been collaborating for a long time, but they're going to do the heavy lifting. So the customer now doesn't have to think about that. They can focus on what their business is, and not behind the scenes, and we can manage that for them through the work that they're doing on AWS. Yeah, what's it mean for the customers? I mean, because this is this is one of those things where there's efficiencies, but it's right. also tech scale to this. Mm -hmm. Why is this resonating with customers? Why is this solution working? Well, because like I said, it's a unique opportunity for customers to not only migrate to a greater solution that SAP is providing, but also get all of their data into the cloud as well, which provides massive efficiency and AWS owns that space and is our preferred player. And what, what the efficiency is for them is now, well, while I'm doing that for let's say 10, 20, 30% of enterprise, why wouldn't I do that for the rest at the same time? And it gives them an opportunity to consolidate the number of tools they have. And that's one thing from a license perspective. What about all the yeah. services that goes into that? What about all the maintenance of those products and the integration they have? What about all the skills that are required to develop on those tools to bring that data together? And so they're saving from like multiple different angles and we're seeing not only you know, great savings in value from us, 
But the systems integrator community are also getting on board and, yeah. and joining this party and making it like a three or four way type partnership for us. Yeah, and Nicole, I've interviewed um, some Amazonians, Amazon Web Services folks, Amazonians technically. Definitely. Um, <laughs> um, in New York at the New York Summit last year. Oh yeah. From the industry group, which is mm -hmm. SAP's part of. Exactly. One of the things that came out of that, I want to get your reaction to this, Dan, if you don't mind sharing your perspective too, is that they agility was like the number one thing they wanted yeah. out of it. They had the SAP, they were moving to Amazon, I won't say shadow IT, because it's not IT, it's technically an application, but they're moving it into the cloud so they can add higher level services or do demos or do, yeah. do things that were experiments and or new development. Right. So this agility was a theme. Is that one of the drivers behind this? Is it, or is it cost? Is it performance? Is it the higher level services? Yeah. What's the drivers? I, or, think, I think it is agility. Uh, that's just a table stakes at some level though, but it's also innovation. And that's really where we're focused on because if you're running inefficient processes, inefficient you know, applications or architecture, then you can't focus on the innovation. And with Gen AI and with what we saw with the agent garden that they're developing, if you're not able to move quickly and you're not also able to move efficiently, then you're going to have either something too expensive to do or you're just not going to be able to develop and build the product that your customers need. Yeah, what's yeah. your reaction? I would actually broaden it a little bit. I, first of all, agility is absolutely critical, and that's what we provide organizations with the solution, the ability to get them down to a place where they can make use of all that data and get you know, ready for all the things that are coming with AI. But today, a lot of what's driving the decision is actually cost, right? Because over the last several years, the, the, the software and investment model has, has not just been about growth, but it's been about fiscal responsibility, right? And so they, we've ratcheted projects down to minutia and minutia and smaller and smaller amounts so that we can measure the actual results. And what that's done is it's actually led to yeah, the application yeah. sprawl. It's led to these smaller projects that aren't connected, that aren't together. So we have to meet that need. We have to like check that box. But what we really are doing, the big value that we're going to do is get them ready for what's coming in AI tomorrow. Nicole, Dan was on earlier, so I'm kind of cheating by saying this because <laughs> I know some of his rap. Um, he said, he mentions earlier in the interview that he thinks about from the end user perspective. Right. But what's their experience? And, and I want to bring that into the next next question. Also, I'll add a little commentary that I've been following Amazon for over 14 years with the Q. I've been a customer since day one and Boomi for six. You both have a similar culture. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of workloads. Yeah. And you both work backwards from the customer. Yep. So this is a classic concept yeah. you guys know well about. So okay, so the question is, work backwards from the customer here. What is the SAP customer feeling? Why are they, why is this product serving their needs? What what is it that's resonating with the solution? If you work back from the customers, I know that's the way you guys work. Yeah, so absolutely. there's gotta be a mirror there, so it's kind of a test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so I'll I'll add it from the okay. AWS perspective and then would love sure. for Dan to add yeah. the Boomi and, and the combined perspective. But I think you know, working back from the customer, talking about cost optimization, talking about overworked resources, you know, in the environment, wanting to focus on innovation, but not wanting to deal with the mechanics underneath. So really what we hear from our customers is like manage our mess and just give us product that allows yeah. us to innovate. And that's where Datasphere and, and all the work that's happening there is going to provide them. It's going to give them a platform that's going to grow, expand, and innovate. And they want to quickly get there. They don't yeah. want it to be a long drawn out process. Yeah, and you guys work back from customers too. I know that from talking to the Boomi folks. What's your perspective from the customer angle there. Sure, well if I if I take uh, you know our customer, not necessarily the end user experience, yeah. but the, which I talked about before, but the our customer is often the CIO, right? And the CIO is inundated with massive shadow IT. I think AI is the new shadow IT, <laughs> right? And it's, yeah. it's very risky oh, yeah. because now somebody can cut and paste you know, corporate documents and just throw it into ChatGPT yeah. or some other AI tool just to see what they get back. Well, where does that information go? It's not even like restricting email and content like that anymore with an NDA on it. That's out in the universe, right? And so now all of your confidential information can be put out there. And so it's really, really important for the, the uh, CIO and the IT organizers to think about security. So for what they're looking for from us is simplicity. And, mm -hmm. and AWS to us provides massive simplicity. They have CIO relationships across the full stack of technology that they're looking at, not only from all of the new cloud things that they're buying and easy to you know, onboard, but you know, the, and this is part of the fallacy of SAP bringing all things in SAP, we have customers still using you know, legacy mainframes. Yeah. And we have partners now that develop connectivity to legacy mainframes. We want to be able to take that data, put it in a place where we can all work with it, and commonly, you know, data lake or something like that. And AWS helps us do that, but we still have to have that connectivity yeah. all the way down that. But the ultimate experience we have to provide is simplicity to the CIO and the rest of the organization. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'll just add to that, you know, the CISO is who I find myself talking to more yeah. and more over the last two years. Yeah. And the CISO is the one in the background going, I, want, I have to, I can't say no. 
Yeah. I have to be a team player, yeah. but I also yeah. have to protect my company. And so what this offering and what they're doing in the Gen AI space is really giving a safe space mm -hmm. where the customer can come in and experiment, build their own you know, Gen AI platforms or agents, yeah. also use the boomy ones that they're creating. So again, they can get quick ease to use, mm -hmm. but then they can also use you know, whatever model they want, right? They can go to Hugging Face or Cohere or our, you know, one of our favorite Anthropics. So it's really exciting. You know, that's interesting, Nicole, you mentioned that because RSA is going on. We have a cube up yeah. in San Francisco right now, and we just did some uh, proprietary research with our cube research team, and we thought that this be, would be a consolidation of tools in, say, cyber, for instance, as an example. Yeah. yeah. And, and what's actually happening in the survey is it's expanding. They're keeping their existing tools, adding more, mainly because there are more threats. Yes. So again, back to the sprawl. Yeah. This is so. This is a, like an evolutionary feature. Not sure. A bug. Sure. So, okay. So sprawl's happening. Yeah. So there's two ways to do that: kill the sprawl. Right. Or yeah. rain it in. Right. Put an abstraction layer around it. Build an sure. innovation opportunity. So I think. Sure. Your point is interesting because now you're saying, okay, I still got to keep my stuff. Right. Yeah. How do I innovate? Yes. And yeah. that's net new. I think that's going to be uh, where the the proof is going to be in the pudding. Right. Yeah. But Where's the agility? Where's that translated to innovation? Yeah. Does product come out? Is there an yeah. outcome? That's really the challenge I think Nicole was talking about between the CISO and the CIO. They have to have control. You have to have a safe place for everyone to play, but you've got to let them play and experiment, right? And so right. If, you can, if you can have a federated layer across the top that's flexible enough to allow your, your community inside your organization to innovate, right? Because you actually do want them to do that. Experimentation that happens with things like AI and other applications is going to be the future. You know, models will be disrupted for sure over the next several years. And we need to give them that ability to do that, but also in a safe place. And so that's why we're, we're excited about how we can, you know, <laughs> deliver that value proposition. All right, so as we wrap, get ready to wrap up soon, I want to get into how customers can get involved. How do they take advantage of the solution? What's it look like? What's the consumption side of it look like? I'm an SAP customer. I got kind of a mess in the sense of I got to get I got to get in this game. I got to innovate. Yeah. I want to move yeah. fast. I want to have new higher level services in say the cloud. Yeah. I want a simple platform to leverage the future of agents, the agent garden. I want all that goodness. Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. Give us a call. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's actually amazingly easy. Is there an agent gun? Yeah, <laughs> yeah there, actually, there actually is. And so I, I think, uh, you know, anyone going through this transformation in their organization, thinking about migrating their SAP, again, you're going to be forced to over the next several years anyway. Be thoughtful about how are you going to, you know, use yeah. this opportunity and this crisis that you're in to get ready for all things yeah. in the future. Modernize once as opposed to step along the way. And just give us a call. The, the, the solution can be deployed immediately. We have a great relationship between Amazon and Boomi. Call either one of us and we're yeah. happy to engage Nicole, right what's away. the Amazon side? So I would say it's two things. Uh, we just actually came out with a press release today about our collaboration and our partnership in this space around SAP, but it could be anything, right? It could be any application yeah. that you're using, but reach out to your account managers at AWS or at Boomi. We have, you know, Marketplace yeah. is a great place that you can go and understand what they have. And then ultimately at the end of the day, yeah. work with your solution architects, work with your technical teams, and we can talk through whatever works best for them. It's interesting. Thing, you know, Nicole, I've been studying some of these power dynamics of the cloud for like over a decade. SAP has been on Amazon for a long time. Huge, but double shadow, a shadow IT <laughs> cloud with SAP. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I talked to an Amazonian, they're like, we have more SAP, like, what's the use case? Actually, it's the pre-sales motion. Mm -hmm. That the initial, yeah. so everything from getting something stood up quickly the time savings becomes huge. Yeah. So the yeah. value can be quantified. Again, back to our last conversation, yeah. We're in a world now where the consequences of either not acting or not yeah. innovating can yeah. be measured. Yeah. Right. You can quantify it. Yeah. yeah, and what's great too is you don't have to be an expert in databases and all this other stuff with managed services and all the yeah. collaboration that's happening between the biggest players in this field. Yeah. Our goal is to make it so that you don't have to worry about that. The value of the cloud is let us handle that with you. And then at that point, you go out and be experts in your business and we'll give you the tools so that you can do it quickly. Yeah. Well, I, would just remind everybody, yeah, sorry, I would just remind everybody that one of the biggest reasons why large package implementations fail, right? Migrations mm -hmm. fail, is integration. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So be thoughtful about that. Yeah. So think in advance as opposed to trying to attach that on at the end. Be thoughtful about it up yeah. front and your, your back end, the rest of your migration is going to go a lot. And also on the integration side, being mindful of the data modeling going in, are you going to operationally get the data that you right. need yeah. Yeah. from the multiple systems that are now connected to exactly the glue right. layers of the connection? Absolutely. 100%. All right, final 100%. question to wrap up. Mm -hmm. As you guys have a great partnership, and I know you guys have a good relationship as, as, sure. as uh, AW, Amazon and Boomi, 
What's next for the partnership? Where do you guys go from here? Mm. Uh, I can see this evolving yeah. um, into a much more multi-system architecture. What's next? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking that. Um, I would say what's really next is going to be driven back from the customer. What are they going to want to see? As we're getting into this space and the generative AI, I don't think we anybody really knows what's next. But what's great is we're going to have the framework in place so that we can be responsive fast. And between Boomi and AWS and partnering it together, in the case with SAP, it's the migration. But it could be you know the aging garden, which I just sitting in there, I just love that. Yeah. Like I can build my own, but I may not have time. I don't need to be an HR yeah. expert. Let Boomi build the HR assistant agent, and then I just add my data and my flavor to yeah. the data. So, you know, I think it's just really going to be what's to see, but we're going to give you the framework to do it together, and I think the three, the customer and the two of us together are going to be best together. Yeah, I think what I'm most excited about is exactly what Nicole said. What I'm, what I'm hearing from the systems integrator community, which is the rest of my job outside of working with <laughs> Fabulous Partner AWS, is we, we want the ability to experiment with value propositions, yeah. big and small. Some yeah. some solutions which save you maybe 1% of productivity every day or deliver you know amazing outcomes. And, and what we're planning to do from Booming AWS is allow systems integrators to innovate with their customers in a place that will allow them to ultimately achieve that value. So very and Nicole, thank you so much for thank coming on you. the cube. Congratulations on your relationship again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I kind of get what's going on here. Two great companies, very complimentary. Customers with each other. Yes. Partners. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, Thank thanks so much. I appreciate the time. You're yeah. watching theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching Boomy World 2024.